Good afternoon. On this Memorial Day, for years I've been using this meter. It does not have a stand on it, never did. And uh, I'm getting tired of propping this thing up every time I want to read it. That goes with a, the other meters here I've got too. There's no real way to stand them up. So, what I'm going to do when I got the idea from uh, the radio shop, uh, Buddy, by looking at his videos there, he's got a, a little wooden stand there that sets, the, sets his meter on an angle similar to about here, so you'll be able to read it. Because I'm getting tired of trying to stick something underneath it, you know, and trying to prop it up and reading the meter. Of course, I have this meter here, which I could just as easily use, and I can read that from a distance. But sometimes this is my go-to meter, my Fluke 73 here, so I really use that quite a bit. So less chattering, let's go out to the workbench outside. Uh, it cleared up pretty good. It's kind of drizzly this morning. Another rotten weekend, as far as Sunday was concerned. And today wasn't too good, but right now it's good. Let's go out and uh, let's get started. I got some scrap pieces. That's why I save everything. So I don't even need to cut any angles. And I'll show you when I get outside. Okay, this is the biggest meter I have. It's four inches wide and about eight and a half inches long or thereabouts. Now, this is what I've already had. This is why I save everything. This is a piece of pressure tree that just happened to be cut off from a project I built, and it's got the perfect angle on it. So we're going to take and glue and nail or screw, put one screw in through the bottom here, and glue this on like this. Then I'm going to trim this down. This is quarter inch Luan. I'm going to trim this down to the width of this and the meter will sit like this. The meter will be like that. Now, <clears throat> actually the meter could sit right like this without any uh, side on it. But what I think I'm going to do It's probably fix it so that it won't slide down like this by putting a stop over in here. So I need to establish the length that I need to cut off here. So we'll do that off camera. Okay, um, this is four inches. This just happens to be the width of this piece. I cut it down to six. And right now it's just screwed in here. But I'm going to take it off and put some glue in here, carpenter's glue. And then I can either rest the meter on here or I can put a backing on here of a quarter inch Luan, which I may do and may hold it more stable. And then just put a piece across here uh, to keep the meter from sliding off. All right, as you can see, I've got the glue in here. And the screw is countersunk on the bottom. So now we got to put a cut a piece that'll lay across the back and come up even with the edge of this. And that will be the back for the meter support because I just don't want to put the meter against this part here and if it could fall over so we're going to put it on a four inch wide back and we'll probably put two little sides on here to keep it from falling or sliding off so this isn't too big this can set on the bench when i'm using it and i can take it away when i'm all done with it it's already marked
Okay, I put it upside down only because the leads were in the way here. Uh, so I put a piece of wood here and I put a piece of wood here and I, this is the widest meter I've got. So she fits in there snug. Actually, she's going to fit this way. And my Fluke 73 will be my primary meter that I use anyways. So I want to cut this probably in half. This is only a test. I'm not using that. I'm using quarter inch Luan. And it's just going to go on each side here. It'll be cut down, cut in half, so it's going to be low, just to keep the meter from falling off. And then I'll have another piece of Luan probably here so that the base of the meter don't slide off. It'll either be Luan or maybe another piece of wood. I have to allow for the thickness because this meter here is, is pretty wide. The fluke is not as wide. Uh, you know, thick, I should say. Uh, so when that's up there like that, in actuality, I'm going to need to put a piece this way on the outside. Okay, but it's going to be low. It's just going to stick up probably a quarter to maybe three-eighths of an inch above the surface here uh, because I don't want it to impede the leads of the meter. All right, we didn't really allow for the blade thickness, so we're going to try to cut leaving the line because I need, uh, so we got to do the same on all of them. A table saw is more accurate for this kind of a cut. All right. That gives me roughly three-eighths of an inch. Not a very neat cut, but uh, I mean a, a piece of wood, but They'll be like that. The back, when you put the back in, it'll blend in like that. With this ridge here on all three sides, I checked my Fluke 73. The meter leads come right down to the very bottom of the unit, but the Fluke 73 sticks out about to over to here, so it's not going to interfere with it. And if the meter slides, it'll only come to the stop that I'm going to have over here. I'm going to have three of these in here. So uh, let's see if we can let's see if we can redraw this. And leave the line. Pretty good. They're flushed out. More accurate if you use a table saw, but I'm satisfied with that. Oz are satisfied with that. We'll just do and make one more here. Leaving the line. Okay, there's another one. Even cut. Now we just got to establish the length. We'll measure and come back in a minute. All right, and what I got to do here is I got to put these three sides on like this. I got to glue and nail these on first, and then I slide the back end and glue that in and somehow tack it to this probably with a couple of small brads I don't want to don't need to screw into here because you'll split this see this wood here will split trying to do that we just take some small brads which I got here and we'll do that so okay this is the front because this is a little longer than the others and these are the sides so what we're going to do now is we'll flush out Right. 
because the front, this is the front. Now we're going to make sure we don't mess up. The front is going to be flushed out here. But first of all, we'll put a couple of brads in here. And get some real small nails. And we're going this way. So we put one here. Use my small hammer. Only need two. Double check and make sure I'm not using the wrong one now. That's the side. This is the front. I'm going to keep that on the saw there so I don't lose it. Double check in here to make sure it's straight before I bring these home. Okay, and I taken I trim this probably gently with a wood rasp. So that's one that's one piece right here. And we're sticking up about three eighths of an inch, which is what I wanted. Okay? So now we get the other one. Actually, I think I made one extra one because I got the, this is the front that's longer. So we're keeping that separate. All right, it's the same width length. Okay, so we're going to go this way. And we'll put a couple of brads in that. much, just a little. A little goes a long way. Straight, always make sure before we go too far here. And we go slow because I'll bend the nails over. They're all thin brads and they can bend very easily. Okay, so as you can plainly see here, we're ready for the front. So this is the front. And let's see, we got the neatest portion here which is this side as you can see the front has got to go got to cover up this and this so that's what we want so we do is we put a couple of brads in here just like we did the other one okay. 
Bit of carpenter's wood glue here. Only this time we'll glue this surface. And wipe the excess off on this side. And we're ready to attach this. Okay, so as you can plainly see, now we're ready for the back to go in. So we're going to do that. We'll shut you off right now. We'll come back in a minute. Don't worry, I'm not going away. Okay, I chamfered the end a little bit here so that when it goes in here, See how, see how that is going to go? And it's going to be glued to the back, but I'm going to put a nail, a, a brad here and a brad here, and I'm going to nail it this way so I don't put a strain on this, and I'll glue it, of course, before I do that. So I'll pre-start the two, two brads. The first thing I want to do, make sure I got my chamfered edge down here, and... Uh, I want to eyeball where I'm going to be here. So I'm going to put a nail here and uh, eyeball one right about here. So when I nail that, after I nail it, I'm going to be nailing it like this with this piece down on the platform here so we don't put any strain on it. So the first thing I'm going to do, we're going to get real small brads here so we don't have to bang too much. They're real tiny. These things are real, 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 real small. They're probably all of a half inch long. And that's all right. That's what we want. We don't want to do any more hammering on this than we have to. And mainly the glue holds it. It's like when I built that uh, little cabinet for Tommy's CPAP machine. I got questioned as to why I use nails instead of screws. Well, nails hold it, but the glue is what really gives you the strength. And uh, it's not a car ramp, so it doesn't have to be that sturdy. Well, the same way with this. So we make sure we got our chamfered edge here. So what we're going to do is to put the glue on here. Uh, are we still in camera? I guess so. Close as I can tell. And a little bit on the chamfer, but not much, just a little. Well, we may need a little more glue than that, I think. Yeah, we're going to need a little more glue than that. Because those brads are not going to be the strength, it's the glue. It's the glue that's going to hold it. Okay, chamfered edge down. Now let me just make sure I'm centered here because I put marks on the back. Yep, I'm centered. Right, let's 
tap that in. These are so small that if it doesn't line up, I can pull them right out before the glue dries. Looking good. And the edges down here properly. So, that's basically it. The meat is not going to fall out because it's going to hit this. And this is like I say my largest meter. There's no meter that's any larger uh, handheld meter. This is the biggest one I've got. Even the Sears one. Sears one is the same size. So, that allows me to be able to read the meter and uh, I gotta sand it and so forth smooth it all out and on the bottom I gotta take the uh, wood rasp here and just clean it up a little bit here it's very very little most of it would be done with sandpaper and I don't really need to paint it but if you ever want to build something like this, don't throw your scraps away because everything in here is scraps, stuff that I've had. I just keep them dry. Uh, this wood is not kept outside. This wood is underneath the shed. And some of this Luan was inside the shed, shoved in a corner. All these small pieces you see here were inside the shed and they came from other projects back when I was able to get wood for 50 cents a piece at Home Depot. I don't throw anything away, not even this piece like this. Yes, I'll throw this away. <laughs> okay, so any of you guys out there that are looking for a meter stand and you have a meter without a stand on the back, um, make something like this. It's not all that hard. It doesn't have to be quite as elaborate as this. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video.